Hello and welcome back to the Online Marketing Show. Today I'm joined by the wonderful Louise Mags from Louise Mags Design to talk all things website. What you're doing right, what you're doing wrong and how to elevate your website further as a solopreneur and online business owner. Louise is an expert in website design and she focuses in on helping business owners who are one year to 18 months in their journey. So she really is all about getting businesses when they're at the right time instead of trying to create a website for just the sake of it from day one. I'll leave it there so that you can hear everything else Louise has to say from her own mouth. This 20 minute video includes lots of little nuggets that you can take forward and put into practice on your website in the future. So hello Louise, thank you so much for joining me today. Could you just very quickly before we get started introduce yourself for everybody watching? Yeah, hi, thank you for having me. My name is Louise Max and I run Louise Max Design. I am a web designer and a graphic designer and my business is focused on helping small service-based business owners with their websites. So they may be at a position when they are ready to scale their business and I can help with that. Yeah, that's me. Perfect. So a bit of backstory for everybody. Louise and I had a one-to-one and we'd met at a networking event and we started speaking between us and we got onto a little bit of a tangent about the mistakes that people make when they set up a website and we put the world to rights and we had this chat and, and it kind of triggered with me that we should do it again but on yeah. camera this time so that's exactly what we're going to do today is talk common mistakes that people make when they're designing their business now Louise you know that my audience are online business owners coaches and consultants yeah. similar to yourself but with a really heavy focus of being online a whole nother section opens up of needing to have a good website if you're considered an online business owner I mean what would you say is the number one thing if you had to pick just one fault what would it be so I would say as a business owner not really understanding or considering the real purpose of your website yeah so- I get that I agree because I think really when you're starting a business you're always told you need a website so you kind of think oh my god I need to make a website and you just kind of make one push one put one together but what I'm about when I meet up with my clients is actually make sure that they understand why they're creating that their website and what the actual purpose is because ultimately your website is a marketing tool and it's the face of your business and what you want to be able to do is attract visitors to your website but when they land on your website you want them to clearly understand how you can help them and how you can contact them so it's really about just taking that step back and understanding do you sell products are you wanting people to contact you via a web form do you want them to book a call with you you know how you can help them and it's just if you understand that real purpose that can then help inform you about how to design and develop your website yeah and I think that that crosses over almost everything that I see in online business actually is not having a kind of strategic element not understanding the purpose behind anything any activity is usually where people go wrong so even social media email marketing Mm, content marketing if people don't understand the purpose of it that usually is where things start to go a little bit iffy and start to be, why am I putting all this time into X yes. and it's yeah, not working? It's okay. And it's really having yeah. that strategy and trying to, yeah, make sure that everything you do forms part of that strategy. But I know it's so overwhelming as a business yeah. owner and as a sole trader, especially, you're told you have to do everything all at once. And actually, yeah, yeah, and it is, it is hard to do all of those things. You're told when you start a business, you have to do all these things. You have to be on LinkedIn, Mm -hmm. you have to be on all social media, you have to have a website, you have to have this, you have to have that. Actually, I don't think you have to have a website to start a business. What you need to start the business is obviously your skills to be able to do your business Mm -hmm. and that ability to be able to network and get to know people and actually get your name out there. That's when your website can come into its own but it's only really I find until like a year year and a half down the line when you've actually got some clients Mm -hmm. you've actually done a bit of business that you actually have an idea of where you want to go with your business I do think all businesses need a website but I don't think you need it to start your business and you know one thing that people think 
that I get a lot of the time is that I have to remind people that actually your website is changeable. Like yeah. it doesn't have to be so yeah, if you've got a rubbish website that you've quickly pushed put together and you get six months down the line, you're got and you're like, oh my gosh, don't look at my website, I hate it, blah, blah, blah. That just says to me that you're that you've moved along in your business and you're at that yeah. next stage to where you you've got more clarity and you can then go actually this is what I want my website to be like this is who my audience is this is who I'm focusing on you know what I want to dive in on that a little bit deeper because I find that concept really interesting I remember when I was working in a corporate kind of marketing space was when I learned a lot awful lot about websites I was not a website person I'd had a blog when I was 15 and I had MySpace so I knew how to change color in HTML and that was about it (laughs) Um, so I started working on this huge website project so the marketing director had this really interesting stance and we had to do quarterly updates of the website as a marketing team to go in refresh the content on not just the pages that people imagine like the blog pages and, and things that of course are moving pieces but every single section to consider how is this coming across to the reader does this need to be changed and quite often the answer was no once you've settled in and you found a footing but I really do think that it's a it's early doors for business owners online business owners like coaches as well constantly launching something they constantly got something on the back burner that they're planning not that then maybe isn't hasn't quite made made it to the website yet they'll pay someone 500 quid get their website set up and then they won't even look at it for another three years until they do a complete design overhaul instead of letting it become a part of their business that breathes and grows every day exactly and also to like to add to that where I said about you know the main thing that people miss in in my point of view is that understanding the purpose of their website that kind of links with the structure and exactly what you say like if you're a coach you do always have different products that you're coming out and you want to showcase to people and it's really about the structure of the site and how you would set that up so that you can build on that the website that you have can adapt and scale with your business and enable you to then attract more clients to it yeah yeah so I always think about the structure before I even think about how the website's going to look like for me that's further down the line it's all about the the framework and how you're going to follow customers through that website journey that customer journey yeah it's so important on that note actually do you have any pieces of advice for anyone watching who maybe isn't pleased with their website is there any sort of best practice in structure that you think is blanket for all websites or would you say that it's very individual for each single website in each business what we need to think about really is us as users expect to see on a website yeah so I work a lot with like I was saying with the customer journey and the structure of the website it's about it's the UX you hear that a lot UX so it's the user experience and it does it doesn't just exist on websites it exists on all sorts of products so for example you know you expect a light switch to be on the wall it roughly light switch (laughs) yeah so yeah you expect you know all the things that you expect you don't even think about that's that's all part of the user journey so with a website it's, it's kind of the same. There's a kind of trend when you're looking at a desktop, I tend to have the logo on, let me get my left and my right. <laughs> correct, I'm terrible with that. Do your little L trick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> on the top left hand side, mm-hmm. that's where people expect a logo to be on your website. And then contrastly, on the right hand side, you expect a big contact us button. Yeah. So it seems like that, as a user, that's what you expect to be there. So so put those items there because yeah. that will then it, it means that anyone landing on your website doesn't have to think about how to navigate your website and that again is the structure it, it, it's so I don't know if you've ever been on a website and you're like oh my gosh w- w- how do I even <laughs> yeah. do this and it should be really simple it should the website should literally like lead you yeah to that place so yeah there are specific things you need on a website but also even more in-depth is is specific 
places you need things to be. I talk about this quite a bit when I talk about getting website set up, even sales pages. I yeah. always say there's some rules that the internet has. There's like a language that websites yeah. follow yeah. that I think sometimes I can see some very creative websites that yeah. are a little bit too clever. Like rather <laughs> yeah. than saying about us, it's like my journey and yeah. little things like that just throw you out of it just makes you need to engage your brain and slows down that customer journey that customer experience I always drill home this concept of I want as little clicks and as little reading to get all the information that I need from a website and sometimes I have not necessarily clients but people that I speak to go oh no but I don't agree I think that I need to give all this detail and all this and I'm like no this is entry-level information for someone to just go is this what I want? Yeah, okay. And the way I approach that as well, because when you view your first, say, your homepage on a desktop, you have that sort of rectangular space. When you view it on a mobile, you have yeah. a rectangular space as well. So on every page in that space, you need to clearly say what you do, who you can help, how you can contact them. So if someone lands on your website, they can instantly know without scrolling or anything, if yeah you're the person for them and then when you think you know you add on like people have a a lot to say about their business and and more and more information that comes below the fold but I think as a user initially if you have that basic information make it really really simple for your visitors to understand what you do very often people don't scroll I mean they tend to scroll more on mobile phones but very often if you've got everything you need above the fold and when I talk about the fold it's literally it's what you see on your yeah. screen on your device without scrolling if you've got everything you need there then the journey should be quite simple you land on the page you go oh th- this is for me that you help people like me I can contact you here I can then send a contact form or buy a product or, or whatever it may be yeah exactly love it okay do you have any little tidbits around how to make Google a friend of your website rather than a foe to fight yes Yes. so oh gosh I could expand so much on this subject yeah (laughs) and I do like Google like uh, I I am a bit of a Google girl (laughs) (laughs) if that's the phrase huh yeah so the first thing I say when setting up a website basically Google isn't going to know you exist as soon as you make your website live it does not mean a million people are going to come and visit your website (laughs) yeah it's you have to work at it and Google will crawl websites by crawling they will he it will like read website pages and form that into a database and then that is what appears on the search engine results pages and the search engine results pages is when you go into Google and you type in what you're looking for and you get the list of all of the possible pages or websites to visit. Google doesn't instantly crawl your website as soon as it's live and you do tend to have to request it to do that if you want it done quicker but Google is Google and Google will do what it wants to do so when I say about setting up a website as a new business the first thing one of the first things I always say is for people to set up a Google business profile so it used to be called Google my business but it's changed to Google business profile and that is one of the best ways you can locally start to rank in your area and again I get a lot of people going oh but I don't offer my services locally I mean I can do I live so for me for example so I live in Gloucester yes I offer my services throughout the whole of you the UK but my Google business profile is set up for Gloucestershire Gloucester and Cheltenham areas yeah because that will help me in my local search so that setting up a Google business profile is something that you should absolutely do it's absolutely free and you actually don't need a website But when you have your website, you can link it to it and you can be really clever with your products and services and link them to certain pages Mm -hmm. and you can really expand on your business profile and obviously get reviews as well, which are also really good. If you do get reviews, you always need to reply to the reviews and just doing this within your local area will increase your visibility especially within their local search and then obviously there's google search console which is where you put your sitemap and 
also uh, can add in URLs. So your website pages that you've created, you can then put mm -hmm. them into Search Console and request them to be crawled. And I am aware I'm getting a bit more technical, but... <laughs> so I, know, I was I about to say, it's so easy though. I remember when yeah. I first did Search Console, because I created our website I'll hold my hands yeah. up and say I started a, it as a side hustle I had 200 yeah. pounds that I was like right I can put this into website hosting yeah. <laughs> and yeah. um, email and I can set yeah. that up and get it get it sorted the first time I went on to Google search console I was absolutely terrified that it was going to be this <laughs> complex process yeah. of filling out forms and trying to find codes that I didn't know existed yeah. And it really was. And I think I had to put through our sitemap and then a link to like our homepage and it just yeah. did the rest for me. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So don't be scared, but anyone I, listening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I actually find Search Console is quite user friendly. I don't, mm. te so I have Google Analytics and I do encourage people to set them up, but I don't, personally, I don't tend to look at Google Analytics that much. You can get, is that, is that bad in <laughs> no, I'm just a data fiend. I'm an absolute oh, yeah. nerd for like yeah. tracking everything. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. I'm I'm no expert of it. And I definitely am the, that girl that uses the search bar to get it to yeah. answer everything for me. Like yeah. how many people have visited my website? How many from desktop? How many from mobile? Yeah. And it'll just give me the right answer. Um, so I do do that occasionally. But I find for me that search console gives me a lot of what I want. Right a lot of that information so I do occasionally go into Google Analytics but I mean for me personally I find Google Analytics is in my eyes really for businesses that invest in that SEO mm -hmm. are really setting up goals and real SEO web-based strategies so yeah I actually find Search Console gives me enough of the information but yeah I know what you mean about data yeah <laughs> You know what? I actually stumbled upon through through one of my team, funnily enough, and I didn't even find it myself. He yeah. sent me over a link to this website called Narrative. Have you okay. ever heard of this? No. I'll oh my gosh, you have to go and look at it. It's a completely free analytics tool. It kind of plugs into, I think you log in through your Google Analytics account or whatever okay. the case may be. Yeah. And yeah. it will give you email updates of anything that's like exciting, ah, any spikes out of the norm. Yeah. And yeah. in plain English, it's like yeah. 300 yeah. new people have visited your website this week. Yeah. Like why? And you can look into yeah. it and see. Yeah. Really, yeah. really brilliant tool that that kind of makes it a little bit more accessible and yeah, exactly. less techy I guess yeah. is the best yeah. way I can think of, yeah. of looking at it and it, especially with Google Analytics because that's changing in 2023 I believe to Google Analytics 4 instead of Universal Analytics so that is oh. so it's a new way of viewing your website which probably is also another way which I'm not I'm not as focused on the analytics side in that sense I think and also for my business website Louise Mags yeah. Design I have a CRM in, in the background so customer relationship yes. management system and I find a lot of my tracking I get through that like there's lots of different ways to get your data and it's about finding what works for you to kind of be able to understand that. And I think it's interesting that you, you talked about how Google Analytics can kind of lean into being for bigger businesses that are really investing yeah. in SEO. I do agree. I think even down to what CRM tool you use, what data yeah. systems you have, it's going to depend on where you want the business to end up. That's because if you want it yeah. to end up being this massive SEO based business that's going to boom, then probably yeah. getting it getting used to and familiarizing yourself with Google Analytics is a really smart thing to do. If you just yeah. want to stay a solopreneur with a VA or, or a couple of support staff that are outsourced that are just going to help you tick along, you probably don't need to worry about it as much. And just knowing the basics will keep you going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Definitely. Well, we're approaching the end of the session. So I always have to ask if there's any final tidbits of advice that you have to share anything that you can't leave today without telling the audience <laughs> have we talked <laughs> for a long time it feels like we've been talking 10 minutes I guess with making with sort of mistakes for new websites one of the things that I always see is the content you put on your website so the copy when you write content for your website you want it to be in a language that someone outside of your business can understand yes so if you're in a business and you're using a lot of website terminology, and that's also why I've tried to explain all of the terminology I'm using yeah. on, on this 
cool um, because actually if you're not in the industry you don't know what it means and so when you're creating website copy for your landing pages making it more basic um, yeah. really easy to read really easy to understand make it scannable put it in mm -hmm. shorter paragraphs with headings and imagery to make it digestible anything like that is going to make it a whole lot easier for someone yeah. that lands on your website to actually take in what you're what you're about and yeah so I do think people underestimate copy website copy yeah. and how it should be written people watching will will have heard me talk about this I'm sure I have the, what I call the nan test which is okay. if we're working on like marketing headline maybe the I help statement for a business yeah. or we're working on website copy or a blog of a particularly complicated subject I will always send it to my nan who has oh, no idea it. about the industry and I'll say yeah. read this yeah. what's your first impression what does the yeah. first thing you think I mean yeah. and um, she'll answer completely bluntly and sometimes I have to throw it at the wall and start again yeah, but it, yeah, just yeah. having somebody who is maybe a dedicated person for you that doesn't really understand your industry if they can understand it then you've done it perfectly exactly that's amazing advice yeah the nan test <laughs> that is pretty marked yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh well thank you so much for your time today Louise oh, I, you've given so, so much, much brilliant advice I I always have to say at the end though please plug yourself where can everybody find you if they want okay. to hear more okay so my website is louisemagsdesign.co.uk I'm on LinkedIn as Louise Mags Design and my email is louise at louisemagsdesign.co.uk yeah so that's where to find me I'm more active on LinkedIn as well and obviously my website so yeah and of course they'll all be in the description bar below if anybody wants to go and click through for an easy way to find Louise thank you very much again Louise maybe we'll have to have you back because I'm sure we could continue this conversation uh, yes exactly I did I felt like I got quite carried away <laughs> thank you so much for having me no worries Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and head over and give some love to Louise for joining us and make sure to tell her that I sent you. Thanks very much. I'll see you in the next one.